Okay, somebody needs to stop me. me. I can't keep doing this. Please ignore my hair. I have hair oil in. That's why it looks really gross. Hi everyone. Welcome or welcome back. If you know me, you know, but if you don't know me, my name is Katie. If you did not know, now you do. Did that make sense? Probably not. And today, because I have no self-control, we're doing another book haul. Yeah, another one. Did I just upload one not too long ago? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Guys, I don't know. To be fair, a good chunk of this was like gifts. Not a gifts for like any special occasion. Like my husband took me shopping and some of these were free. So in my defense, this wasn't all just my money. So in today's video, obviously you saw the title, you know exactly what we're doing. We're doing a book haul. And this is a book haul of stuff from mostly from Barnes. I have some stuff that's not books, but it's bookish kind of related or office related that I got from like TikTok shop. I'm really excited. So let's just get right into it. I love book hauls and you guys on my channel love the book hauls as well. Some of my best videos that have done like the best are book hauls. So I'm hoping you guys will love this one too. There's a certain theme I'm wondering if you're gonna catch on to and how early you're gonna catch on to it. But yeah, let's just hop right in. So this is not books, but I just really wanted to show you because I think they're so cute. The first thing that I got in the mail from TikTok shop was these cutie little slippers. I have these in the Christmas version and I absolutely love them. I've been wearing them since Christmas, hence getting these instead. I kind of wanted one, like a pair for almost every like holiday. They got some decently good soles. Obviously you can tell I've already started wearing them. And even when they've flattened down, which my Christmas ones have, they're still really, really comfortable. And I mean, they're strawberries. How freaking cute is that? Now, if you've been watching me on TikTok and or if you follow me on TikTok, you'll know that I've been on the hunt for this book for a couple of months now because my Barnes was completely sold out of it for the longest time. I was backlogging content. Eventually it did come back in store while I was posting my backlogged content, but I finally, finally, finally got a hold of it. A couple, like a month ago maybe, and I finally have it in my grasp. And that is Powerless by Lauren Roberts. If you know, you know. I've actually followed Lauren Roberts since before this was published, like officially through Barnes. I think I started following her like literally right before. But so I've been following her for a while. Like I went, I went through my TikTok saves the other day and I went down like at least a year. So I've been kind of keeping up with, the, with this and I had been looking for it for a really long time and my Barnes did not have it for ages. And obviously I made a whole series about it on TikTok. We've finally got our hands on it and I'm so excited because I've been hearing good things but also occasional bad things. Newly Nova, Lexi, I'm looking at you girlfriend. And the author is just like she's so cute and she just seems so sweet so I'm very very tempted to read like I'm gonna read this but I'm very like intrigued I guess is the right word on how the book is because I think that she wrote she's been writing this for like years and it's gonna be a trilogy so I'm hoping it's good. Also I'm realizing now that either I did this or I bought it like this but the book sleeves a little ripped which is why I don't like hardbacks. So I don't like it when the book sleeves rip. But then also that can happen with paperbacks. So I should just shut up. The back doesn't really give you much, but it says Payton is a thief, ordinary, and survivor. I've never looked at it like it's a privilege to be in my presence, an honor to hold my gaze, a gift to get a glimpse of me. Not until I met him. Kai is a prince, elite, and an enforcer. If I am to be her enemy, I want it to be because she loathes herself for wanting me. Shut up that, I love that. She's the very thing he has spent his whole life hunting. He's the very thing she has spent her whole life pretending to be. And fate ensures that they would find each other. Okay, wait, it's kind of giving. I don't really know. I'm gonna be honest, you guys know should know this by now. I am very much a person that I'll, I will glance at the back and I'll buy it, just, just, like, just on a glance at the back. Like, Sarah Crowley is obsessed with this book and what Sarah Crowley says to buy, I buy. I don't know what you expect from me, okay? So that is the first book. And on the same vein, we have Powerful, which is a little novella about two characters in the Powerless series. I don't think this is considered part of the trilogy because it's a novella. So I think there's gonna be three main books like this. And then there's a novella. Maybe she'll make some more. It's it's so, I love the cover. The cover is everything. It's so cute. I got the Barnes Noble exclusive edition. It looks like this is about Adina. Adina and Mac. I'm gonna be honest, because I have not read Powerless, I don't really know who this is about. But it says Adina, and people have been loving it. What I don't love, and nobody's been loving apparently, is look at the size difference. 
why? I got the idea that they had with making this small and like pocket size and really, really cute. And she is cute. It's just, look at the, look at the size difference, y'all. Like, I just don't understand fully, but I get the vibe. I get what the idea was. I just don't know if I necessarily agree, but I'm loving the covers. So that is the first books. I'm trying to be in my fantasy girly era this summer. I feel like that would be a really fun thing to do. So next is a book slash not I don't know if it's like a duology or I think there's a third one coming out. So maybe, I think they're interconnected standalones. Let me just start off by saying they are cowboy romances. And I think this one is small town brother's best friend. And that is of course done and dusted by Lila Sage. Even Connor said he really liked the cover of this. And I'm gonna be honest, these covers kind of slap. They're really cute. And I have yet to actually legitimate re legitimately read a like, cowboy kind of romance and this one's pretty small so i feel like i could finish it fairly quickly i'm very intrigued it looks cute i kept seeing the second one but i couldn't find this one for a very long time and obviously i wanted to read this one first even if they are interconnected standalones where i could read them without reading the other i didn't want to do that so i picked up this one it looks like it's about clementine who goes by emmy and luke Luke's a bad boy. It looks like Emmy has to move back to her like small town. Things ensue. Luke is her brother's best friend. So you know it's gonna be a little, maybe like a little secretive. I don't know. I don't know, I'm kind of excited. And it's definitely kind of giving summery kind of vibes to me. And for some reason, this just feels like a cowgirl summer. It really just does. I don't know why. Moving on from book stuff real quick. I just got this little like planter thing. I don't know. Oh my gosh, you really can't see her, can you? Look how cute! It's not necessarily glass, but it's not like plastic either. I definitely think if you threw, if you dropped this on the ground, like a hard ground, it would break. But I just thought it would look so cute on one of my bookshelves. I think Alexa Ray has something similar. And I was really just thinking, the only thought I had when I bought this, it was like $5 off TikTok shop or something like that, is how cute would it be to put annotating supplies in it? Like I have a bunch of these really cute annotating tabs and I wanna get like really fun, like good annotating like gel pens and stuff. And I wanna start annotating like really, really well. Like not the way I do it, which is kind of crappy. I really wanna make it cute and pretty, especially for some of my favorite books. And so I just thought this holding that on my bookshelf maybe would be so cute. So the next thing I got, I would, I, it's not something I would have gotten maybe like a year ago, but I really, really like it. And I think the idea of maybe like putting it together and then like, gluing it together and having it up for decoration would be so so cute and that is a puzzle but look how cute it's like a little bookstore it's got people shopping in it and looking at books and waiting for like the elevator and it's just so so cute and this was only like 17 dollars for a thousand piece puzzle that looks like this, are you joking? I wanna make it and then I want to glue it together with like puzzle glue. I think you can get some off like Amazon or like Michaels or something. And you just like glue the top together and then I wanna frame it and I wanna hang it up in my office cause how freaking adorable is that? So these next two things are also not books. But if you know what album just came out in the last couple of weeks of me filming this, which is May 2nd, then you know what this is. <laughs> I'm so, oh, that's backwards. I'm building up my record collection because most of the records are, or vinyls, I guess, I don't know what they're really called. I'm gonna call them records. Most of the records I have are really old. They were my dad's when he was a kid. So they're a little old, a little beat up. So I've been slowly starting to build my record collection. Right now, I have like Olivia Rodrigo. I have Daisy Jones and the Six. And Connor bought me Lover by Taylor Swift, her vinyl for Lover for Christmas. And so Connor bought me this one the other day. It's Midnight's in the mahogany marbled version. It just looked the prettiest. And I know the whole vibe is to get all four to like make the picture on the back, the clock. But... I can't justify that right now or maybe ever. I don't know. It's so freaking cute. Look how beautiful. And then Walmart had this for only like $23. Are you kidding me? Evermore for only $23 and it's the green vinyl. Look how cute. Look how stunning. That's also 
what we got. I'm so excited. So the next thing that I got, this is another thing that Connor actually bought me. I've been hearing a lot about the series for a very, very long time and I kind of just put off reading it and I'm not quite sure why because the idea was very fascinating to me. But the newest book, King of Sloth, just came out in this series and everyone is so excited. So excited. So of course I had to pick up King of Wrath. If the names are starting to click, then yes, you would be correct. It is about the seven deadly sins. Wrath, Sloth, uh, I think there's Lust, Blood, me. I can't remember all of them and I mainly only remember them from Supernatural but I'm gonna be so honest with you but yeah so this is this is like romance novels almost about the seven deadly sins this one's called King of Wrath it's about Vivian and Dante ruthless meticulous and arrogant billionaire CEO Dante Russo thrives on control both personally and professionally he never planned to marry until the threat of blackmail forces him into, into an engagement with a woman he barely knows Vivian Lau jewelry heiress and daughter of his newest enemy the wife he never wanted and the weakness he never saw coming it doesn't matter how beautiful or charming she is Dante will do everything in his power to destroy the the blackmail and the betrothal betrothal there's only one problem now that he has her he can't bring himself to let her go and then vivian's little description elegant ambitious and well-mannered vivian is the perfect daughter and her family's ticket into the highest eclat at echelons i'm gonna put that on the screen i don't know what word that is hello of society <laughs> marrying a blue-blooded russo means opening doors that would otherwise remain closed to her new money parents while the rude elusive dante isn't her idea of a dream partner she agrees to their arranged marriage out of duty craving his touch was never part of the plan neither was the worst possible outcome falling in love with her new future husband so it's definitely arranged marriage I almost think it might be she falls first, he falls harder. I don't know. That's kind of the vibe it's giving. And yeah, it just makes me wonder what the other ones are going to be like. This is also by Anna Huang, by the way, who did the Twisted series. But this also makes me wonder, is this going to be like fantasy kind of but i also love that there's like playlists on the inside i have a couple book ideas i've been working on writing and i want to do that as well but i'm hoping it's good so i bought it because everyone's been talking about the series and this might if i read this before i read any of the other like any of the twisted series it'll be my first and huang book i've ever read i'm hoping it's good so this next book i'm very wary of because i've heard either really really good things from like steph four it's one of her favorite books i've also had people like tiffany say she did not like it in fact i think tiffany dnf'd this book which miss girl i don't think she did i don't think she dnf's books very often so we're gonna have to see this book does have like a show i think so i'm nervous and i also kind of hate the version i bought because it's got those um stickers you can't remove and that's normal people by sally rooney it's a small book guys it's tiny i could probably read this today i don't know but i feel like i've heard that this is kind of heavy and uh i need a palette cleanser my reading slump has been kicking my ass but look it's got those removable it's got two of them which i hate but this is about connell and marianne they grew up in the same small town but that's kind of the only like similarities they have connell was popular and marianne was like a loner but then I guess they like strike up a, co a conversation, like a weird, awkward kind of conversation, but then something changes. I think it follows them throughout the years. It says it's a story of mutual fascination, friendship, and love. It t oh, okay, so it does follow a few years. It says it takes us from the first conversation to years beyond. It's about two people who try to stay apart, but find that they can't. I'm intrigued. I've heard good things. I've heard bad things. I don't know how this is going to end. I can't even make a guess. I feel like with most books, you can make a guess on how it, a book ends just from like the description, at least like, like this book, for example, I can infer that they're going to start dating. Obviously they're kissing on the cover. I can infer that the brother finds out something bad happens. There's some sort of third act conflict. Maybe the brother finds out, forces them to break up. Then they get back to other and they end up together in the end. You can infer that just from like a book. And not not saying that because I can guess everything that's gonna happen that this is gonna be a bad book. Some of the some of my favorite books have been the most like duh ending. You're like duh, obviously that was gonna be the ending. With normal people, I really don't know how it's gonna go. I really can't like you could guess maybe they're gonna end up together in the end. But I've heard that a lot of Sally Rooney's books, they're not just romances, they're more like just straight fiction like this is it literally says on the back fiction so like there's a possibility maybe they'll like separate at the very end nobody spoil it i need to experience this 
I do, but I really can't make a decision on, or like a guess really about the book from the back or the cover, which the cover is pretty gorge. You gotta admit, this is a cute freaking cover. I'm kind of excited. And I've heard that all her other books are good too. Like Conversation with Friends I've heard is really good. So maybe I'll pick that one up. But this is my next book. I'm very nervous to read her. So these next few things I think will let you know what the other theme of this video is uh, Taylor Swift and Harry Potter. Okay, it's Harry Potter. I love Harry Potter, but we don't love JK Rowling. So I wanted to do a Harry Potter reread, which is why I got this. I'm kind of in my Slytherin era. I Watching Harry Potter also reignited my love for Draco Malfoy and Tom Felton. Tom Felton does music, by the way. It fucking slaps. It slaps. It's cute. Like if it, it sounds like cute indie, like pop kind of. I'm actually obsessed. Crush on Tom Felton reignited. Hello. I also listened to his audiobook. It was so good. It was so Oh, good. I think the best way to read memoirs is to listen to the audiobook, especially if they're British. Cause you just like, you just want to keep hearing that voice talk. But I'm in my Slytherin era. So I bought this metal Slytherin bookmark to use like, you know, obviously as a bookmark, duh. But I bought it to use when I'm doing my Harry Potter reread. I'm debating on either starting that this summer or waiting till the fall. Cause the first book is very, very fall vibes. It's a seven book series and each book is like bigger and bigger and bigger, especially that last one. Deathly Hallows is literally, I think like, I want to say 800 pages or something crazy like that. So you girls a little nervous, but I wanted to get a really cute bookmark that wouldn't bend or break throughout all the use with all of the heavy pages. So I got this little metal one. She's cute. I don't know. I kind of just love it to be honest. On the same vein, I finally got a hold of this book. This book and Tom Felton's book I've been looking for in Barnes for so long. Unfortunately, I don't think they're gonna get Tom Felton's book back for a while, at least at my Barnes. It's online, so I'm probably just gonna order it because I do want the physical copy because a lot of what he said very much like spoke to me, so I wanna like go annotate it. But this book, I'm probably gonna cry reading because I love this actor, I loved the character, and that is Alan Rickman's book. It's called The Diaries of Alan Rickman, Madly Deeply. So the foreword is actually by Emma Thompson. For those of you that don't know, she actually played Trelawney. I believe that's how you pronounce her name in the Harry Potter movies. So it was very much a family affair kind of. And this is basically just like, I guess someone found his diaries and they published them. So it's written very much like a diary and it talks I guess it's gonna go through his work in almost every genre he did like the Die Hard movie to Harry Potter to Robin Hood Galaxy Quest all fantastic movies it looks like it's gonna this this like these diaries are from 1993 all the way to his death in 2016 I'm just I'm just so excited I don't I'm very very nervous because I feel like this is going to emotionally wreck me and it's not a thin book like from 1993 to 2016 that is a lot and it has like pictures of his actual diary that he like it looks like drew in this is gonna make me so sad actually but they also have a whole index of like stuff that's mentioned and people so if they like say they mention an actress maybe like gabrielle union i do believe it'll tell you what page she's mentioned on i don't know what page i just saw her name oh like gabrielle union is on page 245 yeah it also has what year he wrote it and where he was and i just saw daniel radcliffe's name i just saw daniel radcliffe's name i am gonna throw up and i cannot wait to read this moving on to maybe something a little happier real quick and that for those of you that don't know is holly jackson i love 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 a good girl's guide to murder though i have not finished the series don't come for me but this is her newest book the reappearance of rachel price it's about rachel price who goes missing and then i guess oh my god this is gorgeous i'm gonna be honest this was my first time opening this book she's beautiful holy crap shut up okay Okay, Barnes & Noble Special Edition, I see you. No, I did not pick this up and open it before I bought it. I just bought it. She vanished a long time ago and sent all of a sudden when their family decides to, like when the Price family decides to like agree to a documentary, she suddenly shows back up and alive. And it's, I think mainly her daughter trying to investigate what the heck happened. Cause she was technically the only witness, even though I'm pretty sure she was a little kid when that happened. I'm very intrigued. 
Holly Jackson does not fail to impress me, even though I haven't read the rest of the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. It impressed me thoroughly, the first book anyways, and I'm dying for the show. And I feel like this would also make a hella good movie. Hella. Oh my god. I gotta stop playing Life is Strange, y'all. Frick. We hella deserve it. Splish splash. Did you actually just say hella? This would make a really good movie, is what I was trying to say. So this next book is kind of like out of left field. I've never seen anybody talk about this. I've never seen it literally anywhere on the book community web, like on YouTube, book community, on TikTok, anywhere. But it's called You Look Better as a Ghost. I It was a buy one, get one 50% off. So I just bought it. I was like, this looks kind of cool. It's about this person who can see ghosts before they die. But then it also says, of course it helps that I'm the one killing them. So she's like a serial killer, but she's getting blackmailed. And I don't know, the, the ending, like the whole, even the synopsis is very confusing. So I'm very intrigued. I want to know more. And it really doesn't tell you much. Like, I think that the whole, I see them, how they die, like how they die before they die. It's just her being like, oh, by the way, I'm a serial killer. But it sounds like someone's starting to blackmail her. And she's like, no, no, no. I almost want to say it kind of makes me think of the Mindfuck series, though we are, we're, we don't know yet if there's something that happened in her life that's making her a serial killer. I'm really excited to read this. This will definitely be like an October read. Next we have Abby Jimenez, just for the summer. I actually think I just read my first Abby Jimenez book on Kindle Unlimited. I think she was one of those like seven authors that made like a novella for Kindle Unlimited. I'll put it here if it's correct, but I think that was my first Abby Jimenez book and I actually loved it, like the novella. I Some of those novellas I wish were longer and some of them I was like, why did I bother reading them? Like they were okay, but they weren't like that great. If she is one of the authors and it's the book I'm thinking of, I remember thinking, I wish this was like a full size book. I want to know more. So I picked up her newest release just for the summer. I've been hearing this is gut-wrenching, that the cover is misleading and that this will rip your soul out. I'm great with that. I'm fine with that. This one is definitely gonna be a summer read. I'm gonna maybe wait a month or two before I read it I really want to go in fully like I want to read this at the beach with some strawberries and an iced coffee I want to make like take cute Instagram pictures and annotate this but it looks really good it looks very cute people on TikTok right now are they're talking about it your girl wants to know more she has a bunch of other books too I think she has like yours truly happy ever after playlist I haven't read any of those but I'm gonna have to go pick them up but this one is about Emma and Justin and I'm seeing the word reddit that makes me nervous because it's very meta. I feel like when books mention social media, like Instagram, Snapchat, Reddit, TikTok, I kind of like disconnect because I don't really want to read about that stuff in my books. But I also understand how when you're writing a book in common times, Reddit, TikTok, Instagram, that's very, very, it's a big theme in common times. So it's kind of hard to avoid. So I don't understand, but on the other hand, I'm like, I really don't want to read about that. But it looks like, it lo okay, let me just read the synopsis and we'll, we'll analyze it together. So it says, four dates, a kiss, and a breakup. That's all it will take to find their soulmate. When it comes to love, Emma is cursed. Every guy she dates finds his true love after they break up. But it turns out she's not the only one afflicted with this condition. His name is Justin and his Reddit thread about being, quote, Love's good luck charm has gone viral. Now the two have come up with an ingenious plan. If they date each other, the curses will cancel out and they'll go on to find their soulmate. Only Justin wasn't supposed to look unbelievably cute and hilarious. But when Emma's toxic mother shows up and Justin has to assume guardianship of his three siblings, they're suddenly navigating a lot more than they expected including catching real feelings. Has fate finally brought the perfect pair together or will their cure be more hazardous than the cure itself? Curse itself, sorry, curse itself. It's giving Good Luck Chuck. That movie with Dane, I think it's Dane Cook. Is it Dane Cook? I think it's Dane Cook and Jessica Alba. I'll put like a somewhere. It's very much giving that in the sense of like in Good Luck Chuck, Chuck is played by Dane Cook and every woman he dates she finds her her soulmate right after her love and they put it to the test it's it's very i don't think the movie would do well now it's funny but if it was released now it probably wouldn't do as good it's very it's a little misogynistic it's a little gross but 
it's got the same general vibe as this book is what I'm, I'm kind of getting. I don't know. I'm, I'm very intrigued to see how this is played out. The curse thing is normally just like a placebo effect. It's in their heads, much like Good Luck Chuck. I think it was more in his head, actually. Was Good Luck Chuck an actual witch? I don't know. I'm a little, I'm a little nervous. I, again, did not read the, read the back before I picked it up. I read, I listened to some reviews on TikTok. I saw how cute the cover was. It has Emily Henry saying that Jimenez is a genius on the front or a talent, a true talent on the front. And I love Emily Henry. Henry. So I picked it up. So this is the last book that I actually bought with like money. I didn't get it for free. And that is Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Melors. Melors? Melors? If you notice the sticker, this is the other book I bought with this book. And this one is about, well, Cleo and Frank, hence the Cleopatra and Frankenstein. Cleo and Frank. Cleo is 24 and I believe she's from England and she runs away to like New York to be like a painter and whatever. But not long before her student visa ends, she meets Frank, who is 20 years older. So she's 24, he's 44. So already we've got an age gap romance going on. Makes me a little nervous. Now I'm all for big age gaps as long as they're legal, appropriate, and not like weird and gross, which they can all be weird and gross, but you know what I mean. Frank and Cleo, this is all in the back by the way, so this isn't spoilers. Cleo and Frank get married for like the green card slash like Frank just wants companionship. He It says that he offers her the chance to be happy, the freedom to paint, and the opportunity to apply for a green card. But it looks like that their impulse marriage is gonna change everyone's lives, not just theirs. It also mentions that he's a drinker, she's depressed. It says Cleo's best friend tries to embrace his gender identity in the wake of, in the wake of their marriage, and Frank's financially dependent sister arranges sugar daddy dates after being cut off. Ultimately, this chance meeting between two strangers changes everything for the better or worse. Again, it's giving like more of a like deep fiction book, almost similar to like what this was kind of giving for me. So I can't really make a guess on how this, I can't imagine this is gonna end very well. I feel like this is gonna be one that's kind of gut-wrenching, maybe a little intense, but I'm excited to give it a shot. I have seen good reviews on this, so I'm hoping that it's good. This last thing in our book haul, I'm gonna preface this by saying, I got these all for free. So I did not support JK Rowling. Technically these purchases supported her as the books were coming out. These were given to me. And that is all seven books of the Harry Potter series. And these are all actually first editions. Some of them are American first editions. Like it's their first book that was published in America. And then some of them are just straight up first editions. Obviously after the first Harry Potter book came out, it kind of, it went to the equivalent of what like viral would be now, mainly in London, hence the, the books coming out just before the movies would. I think that she was still finishing these books as the movies were starting to come out. If I remember correctly, the first movie came out in 1999 or 2001, but the book came out not long before that. And so like she was publishing these books as movies were coming out. Like this one is Half-Blood Prince, this book number six. It says right here at the very bottom, printed in the USA, first American edition, July, 2005. I don't know if you can see that. I think the only one that's not first edition for America is the last one. Here we have Deathly Hallows, $35 for this book. This is a first edition, just straight up. It just, it doesn't say first edition America. It straight up says first edition, July, 2007. So, oh my gosh, this is gonna make me sob reading this. I already know it, it's 750 something pages. But yeah, so I got all of these. These were actually the ones I read growing up. So my mom had them and then she just kind of gave them to me, which slay, I got free first edition Harry Potter books. Unfortunately, they're not in the greatest quality. Obviously, I don't think we realized how much money they were going to be worth as we were growing up. So we weren't super nice to them. And when I got the first book actually, like when my mom handed me the first book, it did not have the sleeve for the longest time. And the, the sleeve, she's a little, she's a little hurt. Okay, she's not doing so hot, but I love it. I'm kind of bummed they changed Sorcerer, like Philosopher's Stone to Sorcerer's Stone. I actually still call it Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I think it just sounds cooler. I don't know why they changed it. I think it was kind of how um, Holly Jackson changed like the locations and the good girls got to murder to fit like small town United States when really it's set in like a small town in London or like in the UK. Don't do that girlfriends, keep it legit. I love it when it's like that, but that is it for the haul. We, I feel like, had some very, very good finds, purchases, free 
things good in my opinion and i can't wait to start reading a lot of these books i'm very excited they're all very fun very cute very interesting looking and i'm really starting to make sure that i only pick up books that i know i'm going to read at some point my goal is to start knocking books off my physical tbr which is kind of difficult because i keep adding to my physical tbr but i also need to start going through some of these books i have and just getting rid of them i have a lot of book of the month books that i get and then i like i don't end up reading them for whatever reason but yeah so thank you so much for watching if you liked it, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, follow all my social media. Everything's down below. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. I love you. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, everybody. So basically, but I'm a liar. I have two other things to add into this haul. Don't know why I forgot this, but it is the Tortured Poets Department CD. This is the version with the manuscript, which I'm kind of annoyed I got this one because I actually found I liked the bolter better, which I think is one of the other ones. We love her anyways. I'm scared to open her, but it has a poster and a photo with handwritten lyrics, but I don't want to open it because look how beautiful, but I, I'm me. I'm going to open it. Okay. okay. So I have this and my Taylor Swift tortured poets department crew neck came in. So we're gonna open it together. This is my first look. I have not seen it. My husband bought this for me. So we're gonna, we're gonna have a little look-see-loo. I ordered only the crew neck because this was $60. It's either a crew neck or the hoodie. I actually can't remember now that I'm thinking about it. Pretty sure it's a crew neck. I'm so excited. This is actually, okay, this is actually other than CDs and like, books and stuff. This is my first Taylor Swift merch. If you watched my TikToks when I went to the Ares tour movie, I'll put like a picture of my shirt here, but I drew the shirt from the You Blog With Me music video. I washed it one too many times, either too hot or with too much like soap or something because all of it's gone. Like the whole shirt is like really weird looking now. So if I want to do like another cosplay or like another costume with that shirt, I'd have to fix it. But other than like that, which I made myself, I don't have any Taylor Swift merch until now. I'm so excited. Okay, wait, this is huge for a medium. You're joking. This is the back. Oh my God, shut the fuck up. Oh my God, I'm sorry. Language, Catherine says the tortured poets department. She's actually kind of not thin in like a bad way, but like let's see, it says there on the inside, Tortures Poets Department, Taylor Swift, medium, it's 100% cotton, but she's kind of gorge. I'm kind of obsessed. It's not as soft, but it, it is, it, it's, it's comfortable. I'm not even gonna lie to you, y'all. It's comfortable. It's definitely more oversized than I thought it was gonna be, especially since I only got a medium. I'm kind of glad I only got a medium though, because this is kind of, it's a little big. I was also gonna get the cardigan because it's like gray, which a lot of people weren't happy about, but I was, because those cardigans, they're so cute, don't get me wrong, but they're just not wearable for me as much. So I was going to get one, but it sold out before I got paid. Like literally like, I wanna argue like maybe a day or two before I got paid, which was super unfortunate for me. But I think that just means I wasn't meant to have it. And considering some people were saying that their cardigan had like issues, like misprints and stuff, I'm kinda glad. So this is it. Um, Like I said, this is a medium and if I stretch it all the way down, it covers my shorts mostly. YouTube, I am wearing shorts, please don't come for me. It, it's very baggy like and this was I think these are supposed to be like unisex size so I almost argue I could have gone down a size could you see Taylor but now that's the end of the haul again thank you so much for watching thank you for being here thank you for clicking on today's video again I love you I hope to see you in the next one and bye everybody